Hello whiskey fans, my name's Ingrid Anna Jones and welcome to Whiskey Waffle. So today's topic is storing your whiskey. How do we keep our whiskey in the best nick? So we're going to look at both closed bottles, unopened bottles. These are the ones that are in your collections for that special occasion. If they ever come, that special occasion that never comes. Um, or it might be that you're just collecting and you just want to keep that collection really good. You not you, you don't have a date in mind. You don't know whether you're going to sell it or keep it. It doesn't really matter. You just want it to retain its quality. Um, we're also going to look at open bottles and how do we make sure that that whiskey that we've got left is still at its optimum or at least as near to. Um, so when we next drink it, it's going to taste good. So we'll look at all of that in a few minutes. Um, firstly, I just want to say a thank you to Bad Fan for last week's question, which was about the E. If you've not seen it, head back. Um, week number two, we looked at whether, why there's an E in the word whiskey or why there's not an E and what the difference is. So thank you, Bad Fan, for that. Um, today's topic's been asked by SM, so thank you for that. If you have any other comments or you have any questions, or issues or just something that you'd like the answer to or topics that you'd like me to cover please let me know in the comments below whack me a message and uh, and I'll do my best to add it into a whiskey waffle for you um, the other thing is please subscribe it really makes a difference so hit that subscribe button um, and that would be great so I aim to do these every Friday um, so yeah, look out for look out for them every Friday. So moving on to today's topic. So today's question: keeping unopened whiskey and keeping opened whiskey. I'm going to start with unopened bottles. So these are ones that these are the ones you keep for a special occasion, possibly. Um, you know those special occasions that never ever seem to come, <laughs> or you get to a special occasion and it has to be like really really special because. Sometimes special occasions don't quite feel special enough to get that really pop, you know, great whiskey out or that great bottle of wine or that bottle of champagne you've been holding on to. Um, it's always quite funny. So I would say get it out. Celebrate. Celebrate the fact it's a Friday. Anyway, um, yes, you might not want to get it out at all. You might not want to drink it. You might want to keep it. You might be a collector. You might be building your collection. That's fine. Um, but the key is that you want to know that you are keeping your whiskey in the best possible um, position, environment to really ensure that whiskey is preserved well. So you can keep whiskey, unopened whiskey, for a very long time indeed. Um, and we hear of whiskey going for auction that's incredibly old. But it does depend how you keep it. And there are some particular tricks that's worth knowing about because Otherwise, you might keep it for a long time and then be solely disappointed, and we don't want that. So looking at an unopened bottle of whiskey, um, there are five elements that can really affect it. Um, one is sunlight, one is temperature, uh, humidity, uh, how you store it, so how you actually physically store the bottle, and also the materials used. So I'll just unpack those a little bit for you. So sunlight first. Sunlight is so detrimental. You may already be aware of how sunlight can uh, bleach clothing and cloths and, and fabrics and carpets and and um, it's true with other things too. Sunlight can actually bleach um, liquid. I used to work with a, a spirit company and they made some liqueurs and the, the liqueurs were in clear glass bottles and when we would take them to shows and say the raspberry liqueur would be really a really lovely deep shade of raspberry well after a few shows and being out in the sunlight for a while that deep colour would just start to fade um, and it was quite interesting to see the impact just of the, of the sunlight on the colour now the same happens with whiskey that the sunlight can really have a damaging effect to the whiskey. It can um, make it more colourless, it can um, draw that colour out, lighten it, and it can also leave it quite tasteless. So if you leave your whiskey in the direct sun, it will impact the characters and flavour and look of that whiskey. 
and that's not a grand idea. Now, obviously, a number of whiskies often come in much darker bottles. So, for example, I have one here. You can see it's in a, a dark bottle. So that can help, but it's not necessarily going to stop um, other impacts of, of the sunlight because the sunlight can permeate the glass still. So it's a hard one because I know a lot of whiskey fans out there love to display their whiskies. I'm in a few whiskey group groups and a number of people will put up photographs of their amazing collection and they're really interesting always to see. Um, but if you've got your collection on the bookshelf um, and there's windows nearby, it's yeah, the chances are that you could well be causing some detrimental damage from that light, so good not to do that. Uh, another thing is hum humidity. So obviously when it comes to humidity, one of the big things is the label of your bottle. For example, I have a bottle here. This is quite a new bottle, picked up last year from the distillery at Teeling. It's a nice distillery exclusive that I tried. Um, and as you can see, it's in a metal tin. Um, and the seal on this tin is actually quite tight. So if I, I'm not usually that much of a wimp. There we go. <laughs> so it's got quite a nice snug fit lid there. Now that's great. Um, however, it does cause a bit of a problem if you've got any kind of humidity because actually for the air to circulate and for any moisture that's in there, to breathe if you like and to, to move around if it's got that tight a fit it's not going to be able to do that and if I keep that for a long time and I don't touch it I'm in danger of say the labels because there's two things we need to watch for one is obviously the quality of the drink inside the bottle but the other is the label you know you need to keep them well, if you want to, excuse me keep them nice and pristine now obviously this has got a printed bottle but you can see I've got my own label they put on there um, and it's this paper label that will start to go um, if, you, if you allow it to get that uh, moisture in there. Um, and in old bottles, to be honest, you know, some kind of, depending on how old they are, the older the bottle, the more forgiving people can be. So, so that's a tin one of an unopened bottle. Um, and I want to compare that, so here I've got, this is an old... Uh, another distiller's one from Talisker this time, but you can see it's a cardboard box. So with a cardboard box, the air can flow, the top's got gaps in it, it's got a lot of movement. So it's, I'm not so worried about that because of the cardboard box. Um, the other popular type uh, is like this Glen Farkless, this lovely Glen Farkless 40 I've got. Uh, it's a cardboard tube with a metal top. Um, quite a few whiskies seem to use this combination, but again, the top, is quite tight you can hear that escape of air when you pull it off so again um, that can make a difference however the other thing with humidity is that um, bottles are designed to be opened and closed so just look at this one so you cork uh, quite typical for a whiskey bottle to have a cork like this uh, it's got a plastic top part to it so that could be metal they're generally plastic but could be metal and um, or wooden actually wooden is quite popular but the, the cork itself is quite spongy more spongy than say a wine cork so and that's because it is it, they are built to be taken off and put on taken off and put on unlike say a wine cork which generally is designed to be taken off and if you ever try to put a wine cork back into a wine bottle you'll know it's pretty tricky to do that's because you're meant to drink it all in one sitting you're not meant to be putting the cork back <laughs> anyway but with whiskies, you are meant to be putting the cork back and they even chafe, chamfer the edges of the cork to enable you to easily put it back in. Um, so, if you store your whiskey, so we're talking obviously unopened bottles at the moment, but if you store your whiskey in a very dry environment, it can affect that cork. The key with the, with the bottle is the seal. So that cork provides a really nice seal. I'm aware this bottle is empty. It is fairly recently empty, so sorry. Um, so it's not quite having the same uh, show at the moment. But this cork should be slightly damp. Now, normally, the vapours within the bottle, when it actually has whiskey in it, will keep that cork damp. So the alcohol vapours will keep, keep the moisture there. And that helps to create that seal and keep that seal. Um, 
If you store it, however, in a very dry environment, the environment around will suck the moisture out of that cork and it will therefore damage the seal between the two and that can allow oxygen into the bottle and that's a bad thing, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and it can also allow um, evaporation. So similarly as you would have evaporation in a barrel, you're not meant to have evaporation once the whiskey is bottled because the whiskey doesn't age once it's bottled. A 12 year old single malt bought today in 40 years time is still a 12 year old single malt. It doesn't age in the bottle. So you don't want it to evaporate. You don't want those kind of conditions. And you'll notice with an old bottle, so I, as I said, I've got one here, but you'll see here, I hope you can see that, the whiskey is at this level here, which is great. If that whiskey was down here and I hadn't opened the bottle, I'd start to be concerned because it would tell me that the seal up here uh, has been compromised. So, with a cork seal, which is very common, you need to make sure that cat is kept uh, moist. So we're talking about humidity, so you need slightly humid environment for that. Um, or just not too dry, not too dry. But you also don't want a really humid environment because obviously that then starts to affect the paper labels. So even ones like this that are printed on the bottle generally still get a paper label. You don't want it to affect that. Obviously, as you saw with this bottle, it's got a metal top. So if we move on to uh, the materials used, this has a metal top as opposed to a cork. Now the key with that is ensuring that you don't pick it up with the cork. You don't, especially on an older one, you don't want to break the seal. And it's very easy because it becomes, the metal or plastic tops, if you get those, become much more fragile over time. So make sure if you're picking up a bottle like this, you're picking it up by the neck, the bottom, you're not touching the, that part. Um, because you don't want to compromise the seal. Um, over time, check. Check those tops. Make sure, especially if they're plastic and metal, just have a little look at it. Make sure it's not degrading because especially the plastic can degrade over time. So just keep an eye on it. Um, the other thing to note is storing your whiskey. So if you store your whiskey like this, like they do with wine, um, that might be something you think you should do. Because obviously with wine they talk again about this whole moist cork and if you store it like that for wine that's great because it keeps the seal. Store it like that with whiskey you're talking about a much higher ABV doesn't work. The ABV, the alcohol within here because it's so strong will start to impact the cork. Um, and that will then also break the seal and it will deteriorate. So not a great idea. Uh, store it upright. Upright is fine. The alcohol vapours will do the same as what the wine does when it's lying down. Keep that cork moist. As long as the environment it's in is not too dry, it should all be fine. So that is uh, another thing to bear in mind. The other thing is the temperature. So there was an interesting study done by a guy called uh, Matthias Klassen, who is a Swedish whiskey enthusiast. And he wondered about how storing whiskey and the different impacts of different environments. So he took a whiskey and he put it into lots of little bottles and he put those bottles in different places for, I think it was two years. And just basically to see the impact. And then after two years, brought them all back and they had a bit of a tasting session to work out what they thought. And it was things like he chose, say, a freezer, he chose um, tape to a warm machine, uh, he chose somewhere where the temperature fluctuated a lot. Um, he obviously had a, a standard one where it was kept in, in like an ideal situation. He also did things like different materials, kept them in plastic bottles and things. And when it came to temperature, what he found was that too cold is not good. That too cold is detrimental to the um, continued quality of the flavour and characteristics of the whiskey. Um, too warm actually wasn't as impacting as he expected it to be and neither was the fluctuation of temperature. So from that it was interesting to see that really you want to keep it somewhere that's more either fluctuating or warm than cold. So cellars are quite good because they tend to be quite consistent. Obviously you do need to make sure things like your humidity and stuff is checked. Um, but just yeah, don't worry if there is a little bit of humidity or if it's a fairly warmish place because it doesn't look as if that might have too much of an impact, but constant temperature is best. 
um, and but not too cold. So what we need to try and stop happening when it comes to the storage of whiskey is the oxygen getting in because if oxygen gets into the bottle it reacts with the whiskey through a process called oxidation and that process is it's a bit like rusting it's a chemical reaction basically um, so both with unopened and opened bottles of whiskey so obviously we've talked about unopened bottles of whiskey and how to try and keep that seal um, the next thing we can do is look at open bottles of whiskey. So you can see here I've got an open bottle of whiskey that's probably got about maybe a third left in there, maybe just under a third, third to a quarter left. So that's not going to keep very long now for me. So basically if your whiskey, you've only had a couple of drams out of it, actually within a year or so you're not going to notice much difference in flavour of that. But if you've got half a bottle and you leave that for a couple of years or even just a year, you really are going to notice a difference. It really does start to change. And if you've got that much left, like I have, well, I just need to be drinking that up. Or what else can I do instead if I don't actually want to download a Blenmore? Well, luckily there are some things we can do. Now, the key is about trying to not allow the oxygen to touch the whiskey. It's the, it's the contact between the two that is the, is the problem, basically. So as soon as you open a bottle of whiskey, you've let the oxygen in. So even if you only have a small amount, there is more oxygen in there than there was when they first bottled it. And that will start to compromise the flavour and taste. Now, obviously, if you've only got a little bit out, then the impact is going to be smaller than if you've got a lot out. Generally, if you work on about half a bottle, by the time you get down to about half a bottle, you really are going to start noticing a difference. Um, and it's about the, the sort of chemical reaction, really, that happens. And the whiskey will start to become a bit flat. It will lose its vitality, its vigour and flavour. Um, and if you leave it for too long, it will really start to taste of kind of nothing, actually, and just be quite disappointing. So... Fortunately, there are things we can actually do. One of the easiest things to do is to decant it into smaller bottles. Now, I realise these don't look particularly pretty um, and they're not as exciting as having your actual whiskey bottles sitting on your shelf or getting... If you're having friends over, getting a whiskey out of one of these is not going to be one of these smaller bottles. It's not going to be as exciting as getting it out of the actual bottle. However, the compromise of taste, your friends will thank you for it, even if it does look a bit odd. Um, if you do decant into smaller bottles, I would recommend writing on what it is, the year it is, uh, and the date, the today's date. So say for example, if I was going to do this one, this is a Glen Marais port, port cask finish and today's date is whatever today's date is. I can't actually remember, sometime in July. Um, so write that on the bottle. The reason for putting the date on, it just is a good idea because say if in six months time you then open it to drink it and actually you're like, this doesn't taste so good, you can see how long you've left it. And it can start to give you a bit of an idea. Different whiskies will diff be different timings. It will depend on all sorts of things. Um, but at least it will give you something to look at and something to um, a reference point. So the other thing you can do is use an inert gas. Now the inert gas um, is, has, is like a wine preserver. So they sell it as wine preservers. And that creates a... Um, it splits the oxygen from the whiskey. It has a chemical called argon gas in it. And argon is heavier than oxygen, so you spray it into the bottle, you spray it in and replace the cork nice and quickly and the argon will basically drop down to the level of the whiskey and form a layer and it will then stop the oxygen from getting to the whiskey. Now obviously if you do that, um, the oxygen can't continue the oxidation on the whiskey, so it will keep it longer, it will keep it fresher longer. It won't keep it forever or anything like that, but it will it will prolong the life of the whiskey that you've got left. Now obviously it does also depend how much, you know, I probably wouldn't bother on a whiskey where I've got that much left in the bottle, but if I've got say half a bottle left, definitely worth using it. So they're generally around, they're generally about £15, something like that, wine preserver. This one here is private preserve, preserve 
which I think is from Amazon, um, worth having a look at. Um, doesn't, as far as I understand, it doesn't affect and impact the actual flavour of the whiskey. It being a gas, it stays as a gaseous form. Obviously, once you open the bottle, it's gone. You need to redo it. Um, but yes, that's something that you can try and do. I have seen people burn, um, put a flame inside to burn the oxygen off. I wouldn't really recommend that. Um, please don't do that. I don't want to be responsible for anybody getting any burns or um, setting fire to their whiskey collection. Not a good idea. Again, one of the things you can do here, you know, with that much whiskey left, third of whiskey left, actually, I should just invite my friends um, and have a nice time. Um, that would be a great thing to do. And I think in the whiskey world, that is actually quite well known that once you get to sort of a third of a bottle, have a bit, throw a bit of a bash and have a bit of a party. Now, clearly at the moment, for anybody watching in, currently, when this first is done, um, we're in lockdown. So if any of you are actually watching this in the future, the year is 2020 and it's July and we are, have just coming out in to some extent of a massive lockdown from the coronavirus pandemic. So currently we're not actually allowed to meet in big groups. So your group might have to be slightly smaller. I think maybe six in the garden or something. So, but to be honest, six people in the garden, it's not gonna take long to get through that, is it? So, but maybe you could have a third whiskey party and you get all your friends to bring their bottles where they've got a third as well. Uh, you might need to put some tents up. So again, probably not for a lockdown time. Um, and just have a nice time, enjoy. Um, I think finally, the other thing you could do, which I've also heard of, um, is you could try mixing your own whiskies. So if you've got some different single malts, a blend is basically, a blended malt is, is single malts from different um, distilleries, so have a play. You know, don't whack it all in together, use say a small amount of each, try different mixtures, and see if you get something that works. And if you come across something that works, go for it. You might suddenly find you gain half a bottle by doing your own special blend, and then you can impress your friends with your special blend. You can even come up with some kind of crazy name. So yeah, do that. That's a big creative, why not? Um, so anyway, I hope that all helps. So in conclusion, avoid sunlight, avoid cold extremes of temperature. Think about the dampness, the humidity. Uh, make sure you store your bottles upright. Check your bottles frequently. You know, these ones with the really tight lids. Yeah, you need to be checking those. So, um, and allowing the air to circulate. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you again next week for some more Whiskey Waffle. Bye.